Johnny. You're still afraid. Stop it now. I mean it. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Stop it. You're ignorant. They're coming for you, Barbara. Stop it. You're acting like a child. They're coming for you. There are three people on this planet that missed graveyard cars last week. Barbara, her idiot brother Johnny, and you. Now, they're both dead. That's why they missed it. What is your excuse? Here's what you missed. Look, there comes one of them now. Who's Barbara? He'll hear you. Here he comes now. Last time. Mark, Alyssa, and Dougie installed the drivetrain in the ultra-rare one of two 1970 Hemi Coronet Convertible RT. This time, Mark and Alyssa validate a 1970 Dodge Charger RT 440 automatic in B7 blue and a 1969 Dodge Charger RT 426 Hemi four-speed in B5 blue. They're coming to get you, Barbara. It has been a step that the unburied dead are coming back to life. Because of the obvious threat, this station will remain on the air day and night. In 1970, Dodge built 8,574 Charger RTs with a 440 Magnum. Of those, only 1,443 had a four-speed transmission. That left 7,131 with the automatic transmission. This B7 Blue, white top, white interior, AM8 track air conditioning car is one of them. So right now, Doug is out disassembling our 1970 Dodge Charger RT, 440 automatic air conditioning, B7 Blue. I wanted to take a few minutes to spend with Alyssa going over what would have happened back in the day if you had walked into a dealership and said, I want that car. Now that car wasn't on the showroom floor, because if it was, everything would be built out on the window label. Mm -hmm. But it's more like that car wasn't on the showroom floor but you wanted to order it that way, exactly okay. that way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back through an original, we have the original actual color and upholstery selector so we can find the exact original. These are not replicas, it's an original book. Then we do have a replica of the original 1970 mm -hmm. Dodge Salesman's book. This is the thing they kept in their pocket when people would walk onto the lot. They'd tuck it in their little polyester shirt right there and they'd be ready to go to town. And then I have a decoder book over here. Not that I need it, but in the event that I do, it's nice to have it handy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by reading the fender tag. She's gonna write down the MSRP on the car, all the options, and then we're gonna total it out at the end. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do, this is our fender tag. If we read our fender tags like we've learned, bottom to the top, left to right. In this particular case, there are no options that we need to look up on the bottom row, but just real quickly, E86 means it's a 440 Magnum, D32, heavy duty 727 torque flight. XS29 is the first four characters of the van, means it's a Charger RT. U0G, the U means it's a 440 Magnum, the zero means it's a 1970, and the G means it was built in St. Louis. The rest of these are the sequence of the VIN. Now the next row up starts to get into color. When you get into color interiors, that's when you tend to start getting into options. This is EB7. The E means that the color first came out in 1969. B7 is the shade of the paint. B7 blue is not a high impact color. It's a beautiful color, but it's not a high impact color. There's no extra charge for that. C6XW, that's a Bucket seat in white vinyl. That's what C6XW stands for. We're gonna look up in a minute and see if that has any, any uh, cash that comes with it, any, any fees. EW1 is the interior upper door panel paint. That's white, that won't be any charge for that. B11 is when the car was built. V1W means that it had a white vinyl top. B51 means it's power disc brakes. 
Well, it's, in this case, it's power disc brakes. It could also just mean it's power brakes if it was a drum car. C16 is a center console. C55 is bucket seats. G31 is left hand outside chrome remote mirror. G33 is the right hand outside non remote chrome mirror. H51 air conditioning. All these are going to have dollars with them. J25 three speed wipers. M21 drip trough moldings. M31 belt moldings, N85 tachometer, R22. So let's just go through. We have yeah. the basic rundown. V68 means it's striped elite car. So let's just start by saying we're going to go up to the color. It's an EB7, so it's a beautiful color. It's a gorgeous color. Let's take a look at it in here. These are our colors over here. There's our beautiful number one color in 1970. But let's go down to the B7, right there, dark blue metallic. That's the color it was. So if you wanted that car in B7 blue, you would have to order it if it wasn't sitting on the showroom floor. But mm -hmm. there would not be an extra charge for that color. Oh, okay. Okay. If it was a high impact color they it chose, was a high impact then color, it would be an extra charge. I believe that could have been. I think okay. on some models, maybe not. I'm not 100% sure. That would be a question for the Philly Steak Sandwich man, Tony. Okay. Okay. High impact colors back in the day, what were the difference? Because like... All the cars that roll through our shop are all really bright. I mean, I really can't tell the difference between a high impact color. I believe that these are all your high impact colors. So they're just really Plum crazy, bright. Sublime, Go Mango, EV2 Hemi Orange, Top Banana. Okay. And I don't see anything else. So those are going to be your high impacts in okay, the Dodge so they're lineup. Just bright. Five performance exterior colors Plum Crazy, Sublime, Hemi Orange, Go Mango, and Top Banana. Okay. We know our car's B7, so we go over to here. But that's what you would have looked at on the showroom floor that day. You'd have looked at that and said, oh, that's beautiful, that's gorgeous. So <clears throat> just going along the row, let's take a look at C6XW. So C6XW means that it's bucket seats and it's all vinyl, okay? We're gonna look in here in our book and see if there's a charge for that. First, we're gonna look and see what standard equipment is. In the booth, we have our 1972 Duster uh, going tawny gold. It should be a really pretty color when it's all done. It's the first A body we've done here at the shop. This is a super transparent color, I do know that. So you're looking at eight to nine coats to actually get good coverage on it. So I'll be in there for a while. The shop has done this color before, I have not. So it's cool to be doing a new color with an A body for the first time. It wasn't difficult, it was just, you know, it's one of those things when you do that a car that's super transparent, you just know you're gonna be there a while. It took four gallons uh, to get good coverage, so you just gotta slow down, take your time, and just go through the steps, and everything came out great because of that. Everything on this page is standard equipment. There's no extra charge for it. So our armrests, ashtrays, backup lights, battery, uh, heavy duty drum brakes are standard. Bench seat is standard. Bucket seats front is standard. So we know there's not gonna be an extra charge for it. Bumper guards, clean air system, standard, standard, cigarette letter, clock. Here's your engines, not available with a six cylinder, not available with a 318, 440 Magnum, standard. Floor covering, so this is all your carpets and your heater, comes standard, lights, dome light, park lights, all that stuff, standard, it's safety equipment, just the way it comes. One left hand outside manual control mirror, standard. So at a quick glance, these are our standards. So we know now that the B7 Blue isn't an extra charge, and bucket seats is standard on the car. So unless there was a code in here for a leather, then we would know that C6XW, and you match it up down here, C6XW, that's the beautiful, beautiful white that would be setting against that beautiful B7 Blue. And you can't help but tell me that that is absolutely really a pretty. stunning color combination. Just yeah, beautiful. So pretty. All right, the good news is we haven't spent any extra money and we're cruising along all right. So B51 is your power brakes. In our case, ours is a disc brake car. And if you add a disc brakes with power brakes, which is mandatory, $27.90. So you better put $27.90 down there for power disc brakes. All right, and then the next one over is C16. That's a center console. Let's find, see what they have to say with about that. C16 right here. Center console, not available with three speed on the column shift, not available with the center front seat, optional with bucket seats, $54.45.
is our price to add. 54.45? 54.45. Okay, G31 is our left hand outside mirror, I believe. G31. Oh, excuse me, I had those flip flopped. G31 is the right hand outside mirror. $6.85 for G31. And G33, which is the left hand outside remote control, $10.45. Because remember what we said earlier, a manual outside is standard because you have to have a mirror from the factory. So we go to the next one, which is H51. Air conditioning. What did they charge back in the day for that? Uh, let's see, H31, H51, air conditioning with heater. Not available with a four speed. I always knew that. You couldn't get a 444 speed with air conditioning. And you couldn't get it with performance axle packages either. A31, A32, A33, or A34. Total price to add air, that's spendy. $357.65. Jeez. But I'll tell you what, driving around on a hot summer day, you'd be glad you had it. Uh, J25 is our three-speed wipers, standard with a 383 and a 440 RT. So, according to the book, it's $5.40. But according to this, you don't charge extra for it if you have a 383 four barrel or an RT. So there is no ad for J25. Oh. Sorry. No, it's okay. M21 is our drip trough moldings. I know those there's those are standard. N85, which is a tachometer. Down at the bottom. Tachometer. Tachometer with clock, eight cylinder only, charger and RT models. $68.45 for that little jewel. Now, this is the fun one. R22 AM 8 track, R22 AM stereo with tape, $196.25. That is a cool option right there. AM 8 track, love it. Um, let's go up. V68 means it's striped elite, 26 inch means 26 inch radiator, and end is the last shift of the day. So we're gonna run through, we're gonna add them up. What do we have okay. for a grand total? Grand total, let's run her up. We have $3,711. Oh, you already did it. Oh, you already did it? Yeah. What's our grand total? $4,433. So that's how much money it would have cost you to walk in a Dodge dealership. That's, now, that's without dealer promos or wheeling and dealing. That's the, that would be the manufacturer's suggested retail price of that car with those options on it right there. Okay? What was the base price? That's your first number up here that we talked about a little bit ago, the oh. 3711. Oh, that's the base. So that's if you don't want anything. You well, I thought, no, no. Oh, yeah, you I could put it that way. The, uh, this is the manufacturer's the suggested retail price of the Dodge Charger RT. I understand. Or base if you didn't want anything. So. Okay, I'm just reiterating in You're words doing that I understand. Fine. There's a lot to digest here. You don't, you don't have a computer okay, so brain like I Okay, so that right there is just for a shell of a car. I had a 70 Challenger RT SE 446-pack, four-speed Danny Super Track Pack car that had that interior in it. That's cool. You dad yeah. gum tootin'. Stay tuned. Mark and Alyssa head outside to document a 1969 Dodge Charger RT 426 Hemi 4 speed in B5 Blue. In 1969, 432 Dodge Charger RTs left the assembly plant with the legendary 426 Hemi. 225 of them were automatic transmissions, while only 207 were four speeds. This is one of those four speed cars. And the restoration begins now. Okay, so right now Alyssa and I are out looking at a 1969 Dodge Charger RT 426 Hemi four speed, one of only? 207. 207, see, she's getting better every year. Better every year, good job. The reason I wanna go over this car before we disassemble it, Doug's all queued up and he's ready to go to town on getting it taken apart inventory so we can get it off and get it dipped and begin the restoration. This car has a flaw, a VIN flaw. Oh. Now, there's a lot of speculation when uh, out there in the world when there's a flaw, is it a flaw or is it a super rare car? Now in this case, we already know it's a super rare car, but I've had people send me VIN numbers like a 73 CUDA that's got a U-code in it. Well, the 440 Magnum wasn't available. It's 440 Super Commander wasn't oh, available right. after 71. So it was just a goof up or a typo. Just like if you put an A where there should be an O. Okay. In this case, we're dealing with a 69 Charger whose VIN should be XS, X-Ray Sam 29, J9G. Now that J is what makes it a 426 Hemi car. 
okay. on our car, it's missing on the dash fin. So I wanna show you what that looks like and how you can find out, besides just a dash fin, that it is a legitimate Hemi car. So are you ready? Gonna be, yes. What was your question? That was gonna be my question, is how do you know it's not a fake VIN right. versus a mistake? Or goof, right, and there's other things, there's other DNA evidence on the car that's going to prove that that car is a real one of 207 1969 Dodge Charger RTs with a 426 Hemi. Okay, I'm excited they, to see. Let's and just out of curiosity, if, the, if it was an automatic, how many were built? Ooh. Let me help you out. There were 432 total okay. 69 Charger 426 Hemis. See, 207 of them So 432 were four. minus 207, you got the answer. Do that at home, kids. Okay. Yeah, Math pressure. wasn't her strong suit. It's okay. <laughs> let's look at this thing. Okay. Let's start by looking at the, the dash VIN. Now, this plate right here cannot be reproduced. Okay. They can legally reproduce the fender tag, the door VIN label in 1970 and up. They can make replicas of original window stickers. But okay. you can't duplicate this and you can't duplicate a broadcast sheet. It's again the law. So whatever you have is what you have. Let's start by looking at the VIN number. First okay. I'll have you go ahead and read it off. XS299G182937. Okay. And how many characters is that? 8, 10, 12. Okay. They should be 13 characters. Okay. The character that is missing in the VIN, which makes this so provocative, I mean, I know the car is a real car, but to me, this is the, the nerdery stuff that I love seeing. Tony, we just love stuff like this because we're so used to seeing the same thing over and over. When you see an objection versus the rule, it's fun. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, do you know what letter and where it would go in the VIN that would tell you this is a real Hemi car? You're missing the J and it'd be in the fifth position? Fifth position, Between exactly the two right. Nines. Yep. In 1966, it was an H, which made sense for the Hemi. But from then, from 67 to 69, it was a J that meant it was a Hemi. And then it was an R in 70 and 71. Okay. In this case, we're missing somebody smoked the J, uh -huh. is what I'm saying. Which that's... You see okay, what I'm getting yeah, at? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. It's so funny. anyways... Anywho, so the J that's is what missing. made that car special. So that's a that's a big. So that's a big thing. You're out in a, you're out in a field, and this thing's knee deep. It's it's up to here in water. All you can do is read the VIN. Oh, oh, got XS two nine nine G, XS two nine nine. There should be a letter in there. There's no letter in there. You'd have to guess. Now in this yeah. particular case, it isn't buried in water, and we can look at the rest of the car, the rest of the the markers on the car that tell us this this is a real Hemi car. You will admit there's only twelve digits here. Yep. And there should be 13. Yes. All right. With that, let's take a look at the fender tag under the hood. That's our first piece of nomenclature. Okay. The first year of the second generation Dodge Charger, 1968, gained most of its popularity from its star role in the movie Bullet with Steve McQueen. This car, being delivered in season 10 of Graveyard Cars, will become famous for the one of very few MM1 turbine bronze metallic white interior, white bumblebee stripe. You're not gonna wanna miss the restoration coming up in season 10 of Graveyard Cars. The Plymouth Superbird is one of the most sought after and collectible Mopar muscle cars on the planet today. When it was built, the front end sheet metal, except for the nose cone, actually came off a Dodge product. What was that Dodge? Was it the Coronet, the Charger, or the dart. Stay tuned after the break for the answer. Nineteen seventy Plymouth keyword Superbird. It featured Dodge fenders and hood. They were modified, but they were still Dodge products. What did you guess? If you said coronet, you're absolutely right. The Plymouth Superbird used coronet fenders and a coronet hood that were modified. Now, today, they do not reproduce the fenders or the hood for the 1970 Coronet, which is why you can pay a pretty big premium for a pair of fenders and a hood if you're building a tribute car. Okay, I purposely did not take this off. I left it on there. Somebody has rattle canned the engine compartment black. That was a very common thing that happened. I don't know why, but guys back in the day thought it was cooler if their engine compartment was black. Now my burn orange 70 charger, I never did that because I wasn't a butcher. But somebody <laughs> okay. felt the need to paint this engine compartment black. And, and if you're watching, I'm sorry. 
It's not my cup of tea, all right? <laughs> this is the original Fender tag. You can tell by, you see these uh, markings right here, these stamps? Yeah. Those are inspection. That's the person that inspected the vehicle, stamped those numbers in there. This is a very real original. If you compare this to a replacement, this is 100% authentic. All right, the bottom row. Now we know that our Fender tags read bottom to top, left to right, just kind of opposite of the way that a book would read. So we start on the very bottom row. Okay, so the first one is the E74. That's the engine size. What size is an E74? Hemi. Yep, 426. 426. The next one is a D, like David 21. What does that stand for? Four-speed manual transmission. That's oh, fine. Oh, four-speed. That, that's, the, that's the gold right there, the D21. That's what makes it even more desirable. Most guys want that D21 there. This is the full VIN. So let's read it. XS29J. 9G182937. Okay. And we know from our VIN, the one digit that's missing is the J. Yep. You love the J, right? Yep. Okay. I mean, it's a Hemi. No. Yeah, no, You're it's so a Hemi. You're so stupid. Okay. I know, I know. I am dumb. The rest of it's the way the car is built, that it's a blue car that's got B7 blue guts, which is really cool. It's an A33, means it's a 354 Dana. It's a light group car, AM radio, V1X is a vinyl top car. This would be a very pretty car. It's a striped elite car, which is unfortunate, but we may end up adding a Bumblebee to it. But now we have an original fender tag that does have the full VIN on it. And that yep. VIN is very important because of that J right there. Now, the secret or hidden body numbers that will match the last eight characters of that VIN, let's take a look at those. Six characters? Well, the last eight characters. Oh, so it's going to be 9G? Right, except okay. that they usually put the G and the 9 backwards for some reason. But let's take a look okay. at the radiator support. This is the upper radiator support, or the yoke. This is one of the hidden numbers that they talk about. And the reason they call this one a hidden number is if you look, there's the number. If the radiator was mounted in this car, it would be difficult to see it. You can, but it's difficult to see, and that's yeah. one reason they called it a hidden number. This is a theft prevention thing. If oh. somebody stole that fender tag or they stole the car and they put a different fender tag on it and it didn't match this number here or the dash bin didn't match this number, something's up. Yeah. That's This is the things that make it numbers matching. Now, this one's missing the original engine and transmission, so it's not a numbers matching engine and transmission, but the body is. All right, so let's take a look at that code right there. I'll, I'll point to it. Okay, so it's G9182937. Okay. So. And if you read over here. They flipped the 9 and G around, which right. is they were going to do that. They do that. And then it's 182937. Perfect. So it's the same. So looking at this radiator support in through these areas here, it's really hard to see, but this is all original spot welding through there. So that tells me that radiator support's never been changed. So okay. now there's another hidden number on the back of the car on the trunk lip. So let's take a look at that. Okay. Coming up, Mark and Alyssa continue to document a 1969 Dodge Charger RT 426 Hemi 4-speed in B5 Blue. Raise it up. There's our lid. So that's where the VIN is. Why don't you go get the drill and the wire brush off the Ranger? I've actually cleaned this off earlier. So normally, here's what you have. You see the weather strip that goes around this side right here, all the way around? Yep. It went at one time, you can see the residue of it, all the way around. They put that VIN underneath the weather strip. So you have to pull that weather strip back. Anytime you see me documenting a car, like when they were over at Summers that time with the 69 and a half Super B, yeah. that was one where you have to pull it back and you have to run the risk of ruining the paint because you got if it's flooded, you got to see those numbers. And what I want you to do is run the wire wheel on this area through here and get it cleaned up. Make long strokes left and right. So, Starting at the beginning, this number is going to read exactly the way the core support number read. Okay, so read that off. G9182937. 
2937. Absolute match to the rest of the car. Yep. Now, also just to point out, that is definitely a, a number one and not an I. I've had people make the mistake of thinking that's an I because it looks like it. Yeah. They never put an I in the VIN. They didn't okay. want it confused with a one. And there's no zeros here, but if there was a zero in there, it would really be the number zero and it wouldn't be the O. They also never put an O in the VIN. Okay, so we know now that the trunk lip hidden numbers that were that spend its whole life underneath that weather strip match the radiator support, which spent its entire life on the car, mm -hmm. which match the fender tag that doesn't look like it's ever been off, matches the dash VIN. So right now, from the numbers, from the nomenclature standpoint, we're golden. Yep. I'm gonna have Doug raise it up in the air because he's gonna start disassembling it. When he gets it up, I wanna look at the markers underneath the car that also tell you this car left the factory designed to be a Hemi car. Okay. okay. Rooster! Good. Little red rooster! Punky oh, rooster! Man. Why are you calling you about, that? Ever tell you about the time he was dragging a mannequin up the hill from, he dug it out of the garbage down there at Payless and he was walking up the hill with it like this. <clears throat> oh, I just tell him what a great job you've been doing. <laughs> so far, Mark and Alyssa calculated the 1970s cost of building a Dodge Charger RT 440 automatic with air conditioning B7 blue over white interior. Now, Mark and Alyssa finish the documentation of the 1969 Dodge Charger RT 426 Hemi 4 speed in B5 Blue. Back in season three, we did an inspection of this car. It's a 1969 and a half Dodge Super B, an M code car. It's an A12, one of only 826 ever made. Now, it has gone through the body, gone through the metal shop, and ready to be finished. The owner is anxious, we're anxious, and now you can not only be anxious, but watch it in Graveyard Cars Season 10. All right, so what I want to point out here, now there's a lot to, there's a lot to unpack, as they say in the news, but I'm gonna to try to keep it as, as easy to remember for what we're topically working on. Now, right now we're working on a 69 Dodge Charger, okay? okay? We're trying to determine if the rest of the car supports the idea, the notion, that it's a real J-Code 426 Hemi. So, on this car, they focus most of the undercarriage reinforcement on the back half of the car. They didn't care too much about the front, they cared about the back. Okay. So if you use your light and light this area up right here, do you see this steel plate that's been welded in? Yes. It definitely does not look like something that the assembly line put on, meaning it wasn't spot welded, but it was an afterthought by the factory. That's why it's MIG welded into place. It ties this frame rail together with this leaf spring hanger. Or, or shackle hanger at the back. It gets this area really solid so that it can't twist. Okay. Now, they never built a convertible charger, period, okay? But if you had a 69B body, the other ones, like a Hemi Roadrunner convertible, it would certainly have those. But let's say it was a 318 convertible satellite. It would mm -hmm. also have those. They were worried about twist in the car, even though the engine didn't mean it would have enough horsepower to twist. When they cut that roof out, they knew they were gonna lose a lot of strength. Yeah. So a 31869 satellite would also have that. There's one on this side, and if you look over here, this is the matching one to it right here. You can nice. see that they've got a plug weld here and here, and then they've MIG welded it around the edges. And that again ties our frame rail to our leaf spring shackle. So if we go forward a little bit, the only other two areas that make this very, very unique Hemi is, take a look here, use your light. Now, this plate here is absolutely 100% what every B body would have, this one here. But do you see this insert piece that's been welded in? Mm -hmm. This smaller one? Yeah. That's the pinion snubber reinforcement. They anticipated that Newton's theory of opposition for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Yeah. 
Yeah. That, that it, Newton's theory of opposition would really come into play on a 426 Hemi, that that thing would spool up and that this rubber would hit that floor. Now, they knew it was going to probably do it on a 440 car. They knew it was going to do it on other cars if you wound it up and dumped the clutch. But on this one, they were so sure of it, they wanted to reinforce that pinion plate right there. Wow. So that is a factory piece, and you notice it's welded on very much like those back ones. It wasn't a spot weld on like every car got it. It just got that. Mm -hmm. Now, if you had a convertible 69B body that was a 318, you wouldn't have got that. They weren't worried about that pinion hitting there. So the last thing is the subframe connectors at the front of the leaf spring, all right? Okay. So let's take a look at this one right here. Here's some unique things that they're also anticipating a lot of torque. This subframe connector or torque box. Typically speaking, this wouldn't be there. Like on a 440 car, a, a 69 uh, Charger RT 440, it wouldn't have it. But look what they've done. They've tied this frame rail, which they tied at the back. Mm -hmm. They tied it at the front in with the floor pan and the rocker. Look at that series of welds. Those are all after the thought welds that a Hemi car would get. If you look up oh, in there, man, you see how they're welded. Oh, there's a huge spider up there too. Okay, all right. That's well, huge. Well, we're gonna that's ignore the spider because I, I don't like spiders either, so let's not oh. talk about that. Now, if you look in there, do you see that steel plate that has a hole in it and part of it's welded up? Yep. Right there, that also reinforces, there's another one on the other side, and that reinforces the front of the leaf spring hanger where it goes into this section of the frame rail. Come over to this side, and you can see it right up through here very barely, but do you see that extra yep. piece of metal in there? Mm -hmm. Those are what tell you this is a real live 426 Hemi 1969 Dodge Charger, okay? Okay. All right, class adjourned. Graveyard Car Season 10 will be completing more restorations in that season than any season prior. One of those cars is gonna be this 1969 GTX 440 automatic white interior over B5 blue paint. The guy that commissioned it to be done has been dreaming about this car his entire life. It's time for that dream to come true. Stay tuned, Graveyard Car Season 10. In 1970, you could order your Cuda or Challenger with the legendary 426 Hemi. True or false, if you ordered a Challenger with a 426 Hemi, you automatically got the N96 shaker hood option. If you think you know the answer, stay tuned after the break. All right, my fellow ghouls, how did we do? If you went out and you bought a 70 Challenger, 426 Hemi from the factory, factory car, did you automatically get the shaker hood? If you said no, you're actually right. It's kind of interesting. Now on the Cuda, the 70 Cuda, absolutely. If you got a 426 Hemi, you got a shaker hood. But on the Challenger, the shaker was still optional. So for example, we have a 1970 Dodge Challenger 426 Hemi original survivor car, and it is not an N96 shaker hood. Okay, everybody, this is the part we call Getting Wise with Dave Weiss. This is the Plymouth Vehicle Restoration Reference Manual. Today, we are going to talk about studs. No, carburetor studs. I've set three of the studs out here. Let's just start at the very, very top. This is the actual lock nut. But you notice it's a black phosphate like the book calls for, a bottom lock flange nut, meaning that this is built onto this. This is a stationary washer built onto this and that it has a locking ability at the bottom of the threads and it's black phosphate. So that and that are the same unit. As far as the studs go, let's see which one this matches up. So we're gonna go down here and see which one matches this the very best. According to this, automatic transmission two and four barrel. But if you set that there and you take a look, you'll see these are not actual sizes, so you can do your measuring there in the other section, there are full measurements for it. I just wanna show you that at a glance, you could look and see that this has the locator hole for the pin, the threaded shaft, then you have a shank, a recess for a clip, another shank, and then a final recess for another clip. The one thing I encourage people, and I don't know why they're not doing this when they're making these, if you're a purist, take a real nice look at the end of that stud. You see how it tapers? And ours is a blunt end. 
That's how you could tell at a glance at a show that that was a new reproduction carburetor stud and not an original. The other thing they're talking about here are these washers. There's our original washer. It's a flat washer with the zinc plating. They're talking about a zinc finish for the washer right there. These are the hairpin clips. You'll see that this is very close, not exact, to the original one. The other clip is very, very similar, but again, not the exact same shapes. We've got a couple of more out here that we can look at. I'm gonna set those aside so they stay in the right package. This one is calling out the 446 barrel and 71 to 73, 340. That one right there, you can see, it has the shank on the end with the hole in it. There's the hole. There's the, the part you put the wrench on, the flange, if you will. There's your threads, there's a shank. Here's one recess, then a straight part, recess, straight, recess, and then the end. Again, notice this has a taper to it. This one is blunt. Even in that middle one, that one right there looks to be narrower than that one. Would anybody ever notice? It would be very, very hard to. And then on the last one, this one, according to Classic Industries, fits a 66 to 69 426 Hemi. Let's see if it does. Lay it up against that one right there. Hemi automatic 440, or four and six barrel manual transmissions. And you can see it's got the hole, the shank, where you put the wrench, the threads, the shank, the recess right there. Again, the curved end, the tapered end versus the blunt end. So you'll see in, at a glance, these things are perfect. They, they are as close to perfect as you can get. If you will look really closely, there's a couple of indiscretions in them, but not enough that anybody would notice. If you don't have an original, you'd be way better off with one of these. If you have an original, I would say to have it replated. Like Scott Smith up at uh, Harms, he does all of our carburetors for us. So we try to send the original ones with it. So when they come back, they've got the natural plating on it. But if you don't have one at all, which is often the case because the carburetor has been changed, buy one of these. Now, next time I do Getting Wise, I've been told from feedback and social media that I'm not as animated. I'm not as my old funny self. So uh, I will be working on introduction rhymes on the next Getting Wise. So be prepared for that and be careful what you ask for. Until next time, flazoo. Uh, right here is our 1972 duster. We got the buffing completed, the undercoating is done, and I'm getting ready to roll it over to Dave for final assembly. Uh, we didn't have any problems with this car other than just, it just takes time. You know, it was eight, nine coats of color, so that, that took some time, but outside of that, the car looks amazing. It's gonna be one happy customer when this thing is done. I'm out here getting ready to check the numbers on our engine and transmission for our 1970 B7 Blue Charger, per my dad's request. Um, we wanna make sure that it's a numbers matching car, and a little bit earlier he showed me how to do that. So I'm pretty sure he already knows the answer to this, but this is just a little bit extra practice for me. So before we get started, let me give you guys an overall view about whereabouts these numbers are gonna be. And just so you know, at home, we are on the passenger side of the engine. So if this was in the car, you would wanna look right here, which I'll give you guys a closer look in a second. And then the other set of numbers on the transmission are gonna be right here. And if you can tell, it looks like someone has already been here actually and done some cleaning. And if I had to take a guess, I'd think it's my dad. Remember what we're looking for, the last eight characters of the VIN, because it's a 1970. If it was a 1969, we'd be looking for the full VIN. So let's get started. All right, so I've just got my brake clean here. I wanna start with the transmission since it looks like this is where my dad started. Be a good starting point. Right. Okay, I see some numbers coming through. All right, so let's take a look at the numbers and see what we got. Looks like a zero G one five eight two three five, which sounds really familiar, but I wanna double check them with my notebook because I got those numbers off the VIN. One, five, Eight, two, three, five. All right, it matches. So this does look like it's a numbers matching transmission. So let's check the engine and see if it matches as well. So where we're gonna be looking for these numbers on the engine is right here in this raised area. So you see this area here, this raised area? 
They did that intentionally so that they could shave this bottom portion off and put the VIN. So let's clean it off and have a look. I already see the numbers coming through. All right. Looks like a 0G15823. That sounds like that's the number. 0G15823. All right, looks like we got a numbers matching engine and transmission. Uh, I'm so excited to report back to my dad and let him know, although I'm sure he already knows that, <laughs> but that's okay. There are two things that make this Tawny Gold 1972 Plymouth Duster 344 speed tribute car very, very special. One, the gentleman who commissioned it to be built had us build it based on his original window sticker that he still has of his brand new 1972 duster he bought back in the day. The other thing is, it's getting restored in season 10 of Graveyard Cars. I wouldn't miss it. One of the first vehicles you're gonna see completed in season 10 of Graveyard Cars is this 1970 Dodge Coronet RT convertible. It's optioned with a 426 Hemi and a four-speed transmission. It is only one of two ever made. To put that into perspective, the most collectible Mopar muscle car on the planet today is a 71 Hemi Cuda convertible. They made 11 of those. This is not one you're gonna wanna miss. So I just finished up my homework. Now I'm ready to report back to my dad. I don't think he's gonna be surprised, but I did my part, so. Dad! This is actually really cool. I had one of these cars with this houndstooth interior in it. Dad. Our Hemi Challenger out back actually has this interior. Dad! In yeah. Oh, here you oh, are. Oh, yeah. Bobo the circus clown running around screaming my name? Yes. Okay. Okay, okay how'd we do? I got good news for you. We have a numbers matching numbers up the crap chat. and transmission. Of course we but do. But you already knew that, didn't you? Wow. Well, I don't know why Did you, you? assume. Well, you saw I cleared like off someone, the transmission? Yeah. yeah. It looked like I didn't clear off there. the engine, though, did I? Oh, the thank engine you. Went, well, how is our inflation thing? Let's talk about that. $4,433 in 1970. Today, yeah. you'd have to pay $28,987.82 to get that car. Actually, so think about that. You walk into a Dodge dealership right now, and you say, I want a 70 Charger RT 440 automatic. It's a brand new car, so we don't have to talk yeah. about numbers, right? 28,000 wouldn't be a bad number in today's world. I mean, yeah. that's a V6 Challenger in today's world. Mm -hmm. My Scat Pack Shaker car was like 46, so. My, my Charger was like 22. Yeah. This is that one time a year I get to say season finale. Actually, we do two of them a year, but this is the one time I get to say season finale, best season ever. Had a, uh, not only a fantastic week, got a lot done, you learned a lot. You got a chance to look through an original 1970 Dodge dealership book and be able to pick out the colors in the original upholstery. Not just copies of them, but the actual original book. Why are you laughing? <laughs> no, it was really cool to be able to see the... I just know it means so much to you. Well, it should mean a lot to you, too. <laughs> I mean, it's Greg Chargers, one of, one of 207 1969 Dodge Chargers. I've been waiting my whole life to see those swatches, yeah. so... We appreciate you guys watching. We look forward to seeing you this fall. We're trying, no promises, no guarantees, but we're trying to get an episode to time to come out right before Halloween. We've always wanted to do a Halloween okay. edition of Graveyard Cards, so nothing promised. We're working real closely You're to get it down. Down Dracula? No, no, this is gonna be like a, like we gotta stay at a haunted mansion or something no, like that, a real it. one, a real one where people was murdered and nope. stuff. Yeah. I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. Some guy running around at midnight wearing nothing but a on a butcher knife, you know what I mean? <laughs> Are we done? Okay, thank you guys. Can I say butcher knife?